Alexis de Tocqueville wrote, I seek to trace the novel features under which despotism may appear in the world. And he means the democratic world. The first thing that strikes the observation is an innumerable multitude of men, all equal and alike, incessantly endeavoring to procure the petty and paltry pleasures with which they glut their lives. And I read that again yesterday, reading it to you today. It's exactly what this entire campaign was about, wasn't it? Contraceptives, pandering to Hispanics and so forth. Each of them living apart is a stranger to the fate of all the rest, he writes. His children and his private friends constitute to him the whole of mankind. As for the rest of his fellow citizens, he's close to them, but he doesn't see them. He touches them, but he doesn't feel them. He exists only in himself and for himself alone. And if his kindred still remain to him, he may be said at any rate to have lost his country. Above this race of men, that would be us, stands an immense and tutelary power which takes upon itself alone to secure their gratifications and to watch over their fate. That power is absolute, minute, regular, provident, and mild. It would be like the authority of a parent, if, like that authority, its object was to prepare men for manhood. But it seeks, on the contrary, to keep them in perpetual childhood. It is well content that the people should rejoice, provided they think of nothing but rejoicing. For their happiness, such a government willingly labors, but it chooses to be the sole agent and the only arbiter of that happiness. It provides for their security, foresees and supplies their necessities, facilitates their pleasures, manages their principal concerns, it directs their industry, regulates the descent of of property, and subdivides their inheritances, and what remains but to spare them all the care of thinking and all the trouble of living. Thus it every day renders the exercise of the free agency of man less useful and less frequent. It circumscribes the will within a narrower range and gradually robs a man of all the uses of himself. The principle of equality has prepared men for these things. It has predisposed men to endure them and often to look on them as benefits. Alexis de Tocqueville, and I quote these sections in uh, Ameritopia. But he wasn't done. He wrote, After having thus successfully taken each member of the community in its powerful grasp and fashioned him at will, the supreme power then extends its arm over the whole community. It covers the surface of society with a network of small, complicated rules, minute and uniform, through which the most original minds and most energetic characters cannot penetrate to rise above the crowd. Think about all the rules you have to deal with. Think about Obamacare and on and on and on and the Internal Revenue Code. The will of man is not shattered but softened, bent and guided. Men are seldom forced by it to act, but they are constantly restrained from acting. Such a power does not destroy, but prevents existence. It does not tyrannize, but it compresses and enervates, extinguishes and stupefies a people, till each nation is reduced to nothing better than a flock of timid and industrious animals, of which the government is the shepherd. He said, I... I have always thought that the servitude of the regular, quiet, and gentle kind, which I have just described, might be combined more easily than is commonly believed with some of the outward forms of freedom, and that it might even establish itself under the wing of sovereignty of the people, you know, like elections. Our contemporaries are constantly excited by two conflicting passions. They want to be led, yet they wish to remain free as they cannot destroy either the one or the other of the contrary propensities. They strive to satisfy them both at once. 
So they devise a sole, tutelary, and all-powerful form of government, but elected by the people. They combine the principle of centralization and that of popular sovereignty. This gives them a respite. They console themselves for being in tutelage by the reflection that they have chosen their own guardians. We've chosen our own dictators. Every man allows himself to be put in leading strings because he sees that it is not a person or a class of persons, but the people at large who hold the end of of his chain. But this system, that is, by this system, the people shake off their state of dependence just long enough to select their master and then relapse into it again. A great many persons at present day are quite contented with this sort of compromise between administrative despotism and the sovereignty of the people. And they think they've done enough for the protection of, the, of uh, individual freedom when they have surrendered it to the power of the nation at large. Alexis de Tocqueville wrote, Subjection in minor affairs breaks out every day and is felt by the whole community indiscriminately. It does not drive men to resistance, but it crosses them at every turn till they are led to surrender their exercise of their own will. Thus their spirit is gradually broken and their character enervated. Whereas that obedience which is exacted on a few important but rare occasions only exhibits servitude at certain intervals and throws the burden of it upon a small number of men. It is in vain to summon a people who have been rendered so dependent on the central government to choose from time to time the representatives of that power. Did you hear that? Elections are pointless, he says, at that point. This rare and brief exercise of their free choice, however important it may be, will not prevent them from gradually losing the faculties of thinking, feeling, and acting for themselves and thus gradually falling below the level of humanity. Alexis de Tocqueville, Democracy in America. Ladies and gentlemen, this is who we are today. This is who I've been thinking about it, thought about it, all day yesterday, before the show, last night, kept me up late, thinking about it this morning, read it over and over and over again, this is what we've become in this election to me has demonstrated. The only issue is whether we can break out of it. Now what does this have to do with anything else? Well, I'll be honest with you. I hear these Republican officials and former Republican officials on television and so forth telling us Boehner's a good guy, follow Boehner. This one's a good guy, follow this one. How about 2014, 2016, Rubio's a good guy, this is a good... Ladies and gentlemen, one election cannot fix this. It can slow it, but it can't fix it. Many, many, many of our fellow citizens have become a conquered people. Willingly and unwillingly. A conquered people. Wittingly and unwittingly. They seek to exist. Not live. Exist. Relying on government for contraceptives. Which apparently influenced a large majority of single women to vote for Barack Obama. And I can go on down the list of what was done, what was said in this past election. In other words, it highlighted, it crystallized the decay of our society. It underscored how the government is devouring the society. And in the society, the individual. How little free will we actually have. How few property rights we actually have. And as I say, the circle of liberty that surrounds each of us is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. 
And I have to listen to these Republican leaders who don't even comprehend what's going on. Oh, they'll fight over this bill and that bill. They don't understand that our very existence is at stake. And so they go out and they say, Obama cares the law, there's nothing we can do about it. He's surrendering our sovereignty. We need new tax revenue. The nation is collapsing fiscally from spending, from borrowing, from printing. Tax revenue, with all due respect, has absolutely nothing to do with it. The entire debate is we need a balanced approach. Balanced approach? To what? To our demise? Who among the Republicans will speak out? And talk about the deep-rooted difficulties that we confront. Who among them? That's what I'm waiting for. And I think I'm going to be waiting a very, very long time. I'll be right back. Steve Monroe, New Jersey, the great WABC. Quickly, go. Mark, how are you? All right, thank you. I got to tell you, I listen and I listen and I just find it unbelievable that the Republicans cannot figure out exactly why they lost and will continue to lose until they and, and listen i have nothing personally against anybody but until they distance themselves from far-right people like yourself and hannity and and rush there's just no chance of ever succeeding let, let me let me let, let me explain something to you L- lower him down because he's an idiot let me explain something to you steve you don't deserve liberty You don't deserve to live in a free society. You don't even know what far right is. You have no idea. People who defend the Constitution, private property rights, individual sovereignty, people who are concerned about a massive out-of-control federal government that rejects its constitutional moorings, people who resist being turned over to a massive administrative state and mastermind temporary politicians who run it, You're as stupid as they come, Steve. We're the ones who are resisting tyranny. You're part of it. You're a clown. You're a follower. You just go along with it. This isn't a joke, pal. We're losing our country. You get it? We're losing our country. Do you get it? You don't get it at all. And there's nothing I can do to help you. And here's the problem. You get the vote and you drag the rest of us into your world, into your dark, bleak future, and you drag our children there, and that's why 57 million of us are fed up and furious. You got it, Steve? Yes or no? I, I, I'm, now I'm, get I'm, lost, pal. This is, what we, uh, this is what we have, ladies and gentlemen. Uninformed. Uninformed people. And when we get ready, <laughs> you're right-wingers. Stop following Rush, Sean, and you're following anybody. I'm following our principles. I'm following our heritage. This guy rejects Western civilization. He rejects the Enlightenment. He rejects our founding. Ha, ha, ha. Very funny. You won an election. We're all screwed. That said, we're not giving up. But can you imagine? It's meatheads like that guy. By the millions. Who seek to control our fate. What is it that is so right-wing about what I say? Quoting Alexis de Tocqueville, quoting John Locke, Charles de Montesquieu, that jerk doesn't even realize that Montesquieu and Locke are crucial to our founding, are crucial to the revolution. Has no comprehension whatsoever. He's lost. He's gone. And he thinks he's smarter than the rest of us. He's exactly the kind of guy Alexis de Tocqueville described, and I just read to you. There are millions of them. Please, government, just give me a check. Feed me, clothe me, house me. Tell me what to buy, what kind of light bulb I need to have. Tell my, tell my wife or my girlfriend what kind of contraceptives you're going to give her for free. This is what this guy is. He's existing. He's not living. And he's hopeless. Utterly and completely.